Well, welcome back to Tuts Plus. My name's Simon Plant, and today we're going to take this image and add some drama to the scene. Well, welcome back. So today we're going to take a look at this image. Now, a few years ago, I was making lots and lots of video tutorials, and um, I did uh, this image was a kind of a personal little project I wanted to do, and um, I turned it into a video as well. So I went into a studio um, with a model, and uh, we hired uh, some costumes and some props, and did this grand production. And uh, of course, I only ended up using one of the images. So this is a, a shot I did at, towards the end of the shoot uh, for just for the hell of it. Uh, for a bit of fun and uh, I've never used it so I thought it'd be fun to go into Photoshop CC uh, we're gonna today um, source a new sky add that in and add some uh, texture some noise and add some grittiness and drama to the, to the scene so uh, let's get on and uh, get cracking so this is my original image. Now I have uh, put it through Lightroom and adjusted it slightly, desaturated it a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the details of that because obviously we're short on time and a lot of this stuff is covered in lots of other videos. So uh, that's my original and this is uh, this is the um, the image that I've masked out again. Uh, it's on a black background so it's fairly straightforward. I use a combination of the quick selection tool um, and when you use these quick selection tool or the magic wand tool etc you usually find it looks like a dog's dinner when it comes out the other end so you do need to go into refine uh, refine the mask uh, and uh, clean it up and uh, make a few adjustments so I did a combination of that and just some soft masking you can see my mask here and you can see I've had to go in with a brush and just blend it a little bit uh, around here and around this edge here with uh, some fine details um, so that's what we've ended up with so we wanted to go and find a, a new sky. Now, um, being, um, for a better word, a landscape photographer, I do a lot of location photography in my work, whether it's commercially or uh, personally. So skies, for me, are probably one of the most important things uh, in my images. Uh, and therefore, I'm, even if I'm not shooting a landscape, I will often go out and uh, shoot lots and lots of skies to have in my archive. So, um, so they're very, 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 very important. Now, what you've got to be careful of, in my opinion, is when you're picking out skies, yeah, you want something with a bit of drama, but sometimes you can very, very easily, the sky can, you know, can very easily distract. If you've got a person or a car or some kind of a, something else going on in the scene, and it's not purely a landscape picture, the sky can sometimes tear, distract from the main image uh, in the scene. So for this image here, I wanted something with a bit of drama, but you've got to be careful we don't pick anything uh, with too much texture and too much going on because it can distract. The other thing I also find uh, can work quite well is uh, I might find, let's say I've got this image and I love this kind of movement uh, in the sky here, uh, but I really I prefer um, the some of the cloud details in this image. Sometimes I'll, I'll combine skies, uh, I'll combine two, three, four skies together and blend in the clouds and get them looking uh, nice in the areas that are more visible in my scene, if that makes sense. So so today, this is the sky I've decided I want to go with, uh, this top one. Uh, obviously, it needs, needs to saturate a little bit, um, but I do quite like the uh, the drama in the background. It's not too overpowering. I think it's going to work really well with this image. Now, the other thing we've got to consider is that uh, when we're picking the sky is you can't have a sky with the sun's blazing in its corner because we've got a light source in, in this image coming from high up above in this corner and we can see the shadow coming down across his shield here so we need the, the light source in the background to kind of you know be in a similar spot to uh, to the lighting on our model now um, my second tip here um, is that uh, it's sometimes when you composite in it's useful to um, add a black and white uh, layer on top of all your images uh, because this drops the color out of the scene and it just it's a little bit easier sometimes to uh, to judge if something's working or not so I'm going to go to the bottom of my layers palette and add a black and white adjustment layer I'm not too worried about the uh, adjustments there so just leave it at standard 
settings uh, and now we can, we can see the colors dropped out we're not being distracted by the blue or anything and we can just look at the image for what it is uh, based on the luminosity of the uh, of the two images so I'm gonna get down I'm gonna get delete this guy because we're not gonna use this one today I'm just gonna use this one uh, it needs to enlarge in a little bit so we're gonna command and control click on the sky layer uh, and then command T to bring up the transform I'm just gonna bring the edges in a little bit Need to make sure I've got enough cover for the image. The other thing, uh, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. Wrong way. The other thing I want to do is to uh, bring the bottom of the sky down. Somewhere around there. And I'm also going to uh, right click and I'm going to go to the transform um, menu. And I want to use the perspective. And sometimes if I want to add that little bit more drama to the picture, sometimes it can help to enlarge or drag the perspective out at the top of the image. And that gets the clouds kind of receding quite quickly into the scene. Uh, again, we're going to ch change the shape uh, of the background a little bit. So I might need to. Um, go back into free transform and just readjust the image a bit. That's looking quite good. Got to make sure I've got enough cover. We can come in a little bit on that side. Somewhere around there, I think it works quite well. And that's looking pretty good. Let's see if I can drag this down a little bit more. I want to make sure we keep this bit on this edge and if I decide that I need this further down and I'm losing this I could always come in and retouch that and bring it up a little bit so somewhere around there I think looks gonna look quite good I'm, I'm judging it mainly on these clouds here press enter and then we've got our, our cl uh, clouds uh, background um, in the right spot for what we want um, again you may find once you've got your uh, once you've got your sky in shot you might find that your masking needs readjusting and, and we need to do a little bit of work on the the edge here it's going to a little bit I think too soft on my mask so uh, it's always a good idea when you, you you find a mask if you can bring your background in first uh, and obviously mask with the background in the, in situ so you can see exactly what you're dealing with Okay, so I want to show you a little trick. I, I've been refining this edge with the brush tool. Uh, as I said, these videos are quite short. I can't show you actually every detail, unfortunately, uh, as I would like to. Um, but I've been refining the edge here. Now, another little trick, rather than going to refine masks, this is a bit of an old-school trick. If you highlight the mask here, and let's say you just want to... Oh, close that off. Uh, let's say you just say you want, you want to affect this one area that you've been working on, like I have. You just come around the area here with, the, let's say, the lasso tool, and go to image adjust and curves and we're just we're on the mask here not the image so that's important we can come in and we can actually refine the mask a little bit uh, by darkening that area and, and it was kind of uh, they call it choking they can choke and also or you can expand the mask to change the edge and I'm just gonna just gonna darken that edge a little bit just to tighten it up a wee bit and then I'm gonna go to uh, filter find filter where's filter gone filter blur and then gaussian blur and then i'm just going to blur that edge a tiny little bit i'm going to bring this down and uh, not that low probably past half a pixel and just uh, do that so that's a quick way of just maybe just adjusting one edge this, this is the before if i can get it work and then there's it after you can see it's just softened up that edge a little bit so that's just a quick way of just get rid of that just get a quick way of uh, just refining a certain area of the mask you could go into into refine the refine edge and do it that way as well but sometimes i find that that method for just quickness uh, works really well so just another little, little uh, uh, old school uh, tip if you want to call it that Okay, so we've refined the mask a little bit. It's going to take more work than, than currently is. I'm not 100% happy with it, but again, that takes time. Uh, so uh, we'll move on. And um, now I'm going to uh, I've turned the black and white layer off for a minute. I'm going to just come in and adjust this sky. I want to desaturate it a little bit. So I'm going to make an adjustment layer, get down to a uh, hue saturation, and I'm just going to drop some of the saturation at the sky, mainly affecting the blues. 
just a little bit and that just gets it a bit, similar saturation values as perhaps on the shield here not that it's massively important at this stage but I think it just does help uh, because we want to start to work on the color in a little while and I just want to try to get it a little bit better balanced out so if it works as a color image uh, as it is and I'm going to be a bit happier when we come to uh, do the color grading on the on the on the overall picture okay so now we've sort of balanced the saturations out I'm going to turn on the black and white adjustment layer again now what we can do in here is we can use this to kind of desaturate the image that bit further before we start color grading it um, we're going to use this uh, little uh, scrubby slider here and want to darken the sky have some drama and contrast in the sky and do that by dragging down on the where the blues are in the sky and maybe the red here on the shield as well maybe we darken that a fair bit like so and then we could just simply drop down the opacity so we start to see some of that color coming back through like so we can always come back to this now in terms of color grading there's lots of different ways we can uh, color grade the image and one of my favorites is to use the gradient map now it's a little bit fiddly when you first get to use it uh, but once you kind of master it you uh, you probably won't want to use anything else well at least I don't so we've got a gradient map here we're going to click on this bar I advise a start off with a standard from black to white um, click OK um, and then you've got a black and white no nonsense gradient map adjustment um, double click on it again now we can go back in now you've got it set up you can go back in and edit it in fact what I would probably do is drop the opacity to about 50% now it's a bit difficult for me today because I, I, I'm, I'm having to change my screen resolution to do these videos and it's, uh, it's mixing everything a little bit more cramped so I can't see as easily as I would do normally what's going on but uh, I'm going to drop it back to 50% double click to edit it and then we're going to go in and we're going to start picking some colors now I want my uh, I want my highlights to be fairly warm so I'm going to click on the little stopper here the highlight stopper go down to color and I'm going to pick out a, a warmish color for the highlights and again we can probably come back backwards and forwards on this uh, to readjust it like so then I'm going to pick, uh, in the middle I'm going to click and we're going to add another stopper go down to colour again and I want to pick out something a little bit more coolish for this one somewhere around there as a starting point should do us again if I had more room I could see a bit better here, let's see if I can close this down a little bit oh that will help okay so you can see uh, uh, sort of live what's going on so we can use these little in-between sliders to change the um, the transitions of the color I'm just going to click on here again I'm going to click on slightly darker highlight there see how that's doing and this is the beauty is it's very uh, very adjustable and then uh, blacks I'm going to leave blacks and blacks uh, down there as they are I can bring some of this lighter color in if we wish and it's just a matter of just keep adjusting and um, that color I'm not too sure about I think it's a bit too saturated so if we go this way we can just lighten that so click OK you can come back in here you can turn it on and off we can turn up the opacity now a little bit if we want to but I don't think we're far off there now the good thing about this is once you've got it right in certain areas um, we can do a number of things we can obviously adjust uh, with the, by painting on the mask to erase certain areas let's so let's say I may want to bring back some of the natural color uh, in the in the helmet we can come in with the brush tool with black uh, we're going to use some fairly soft about 10% and we can actually paint on the mask and bring back a little bit of that color coming through in the helmet which you quite like Bear in mind, obviously, I'm going to do this very quickly. The other thing we can do, if you want to see a bit more natural blue up here, we could perhaps even double click and bring on the um, the blend if sliders, and we could perhaps bring that up. If you can see, watch the sky, you can see the natural color coming back through. Hold down the Alt or Option key to split that again, just to bring in a nice transition. I'm going to bring in a bit more natural colour. So there's a lots of um, lots of flexibility with these things. There's before, there's after. The other thing you can do is we put this onto the colour 
and that will affect the color only and not the luminosity of the image um, and then just play around like so so that's before there's after so it's just bringing a little bit more unusual color a little bit more dramatic color into the image as i said you can double click on this and you can keep adjusting it as much as you want you can bring another slider in there if you want to maybe bring a slightly darker richer tone in and these are all as i said fully adjustable like so so that's one way of color toning. You obviously can use hue saturation as well, um, or you could use the color balance, etc., uh, etc. Et so, but this is one of my favorites because once you've mastered it, this is quite a great way uh, of of controlling the colors in the image. I'm just going to bring that back in a bit more. I may want to put a bit more natural skin color back in. Bear in mind, I'm using a, a pressure sensitive tablet uh, here, so I'm just adjusting my opacities. There's the mask, like so. Okay, so nearly there now, just a couple more things to do. First of all, I want to do a little bit of dodge and burn in. Now, there's two ways to dodge and burn. You can go up here, add a new layer, uh, and uh, go to either soft light uh, or overlay. Uh, overlay is a little bit more harsh. Soft light is, uh, well, softer. Um, fill this button fill with uh, neutral color 50% gray and you've got a layer there now I normally do two of these and then you can do uh, on one layer you can do your burning here and keep your percentages down quite low and build it up slowly and then I do another one for the dodging where I would do the uh, use the dodge tool and again dodge the highlights another way and the way I'm going to use today just because uh, I feel like it is to use a curves adjustment layer and we can do uh, do a darkening layer like so and again you can come back and readjust this and we can call that one darken and then we can do another one which can you guess is going to be called lighten okay something like that name those next job is to get the paint bucket tool make sure you've got black in the foreground and then you need to fill these with black as I've already done um, and that just uh, conceals the adjustment so white reveals black conceals so we've now got two layer masks both filled with black and we can get now get a paintbrush tool and uh, make sure we've got uh, white in the foreground like so and we're going to use a, use the paintbrush pull to paint on the mask and we're going to paint again bear in mind i'm using a pressure sensitive tablet and pen uh, if not drop down maybe drop down your opacity a little bit and your flow if you wish and again slowly build the areas up so anywhere you want to kind of um add a little bit more uh drama um contrast attention we can go over those areas and I think the eyes especially demand a little bit more attention it's all about the eyes I think some of the highlights on the helmet here be quite good and so if you look at the mask I'm just gradually building up the highlights on there maybe on the spear some of these highlights are quite nice bring out again if you make a mistake you can just go over either the lasso tool on the mask and uh, fill that with black or of course you can just paint it away with the brush so there's before I'm just get rid of this selection there's before there's after very subtle at the moment you can see it coming in on his helmet there and probably the more so that on the dark layer is going to show up a little bit more than on the highlight layer so here we can just darken any areas we're not too worried about attention going to just bring those in by painting in like so and this is just adding like a little bit of modeling to the picture as well Maybe darken those up a little bit. And I'm not going to sit 
you through the rest of that because it's going to take a little while but you get the idea of what I'm getting at so let me come back to you in a minute when I've completed a little bit more of that okay so we've finished doing that I'm going to highlight these two I'm going to lock them together I'm going to press command or control G to group them and I'm going to just literally call that on D and B for dodge and burn there's before there's after so you can see he's really highlighted his eyes like so and it really accentuated I think this eye especially where he's kind of scowling okay um, next thing I'm going to just, uh, go to the top of the stack here I'm going to add a curves adjustment there I'm going to darken the edges of the image in fact darken pretty much the whole image at the moment and I'm gonna leave a lot of this quite dark I think but I do want to obviously lighten the areas here I'll paint that one in get the paint bucket tool and fill that with black and again maybe I'm, I think I'll get the paintbrush tool this time and paint in some of this area so I've basically darkened down a whole image but I'm painting back in some lighter bits now and don't worry I know it looks a bit of a mess at the moment but in a minute it's gonna look much better okay go to uh, filter blur gaussian blur I'm gonna put a large radius of blurring on this click OK and just wait for my computer to catch up okay, it's slowing down a bit now and what we'll find then is there's before there's after that's again added attention into the more interesting parts might need to go back in again because we blur that quite a lot probably too much and the transition so I'm just going to use a paintbrush tool now to come in and paint black make sure we've got the detail there I'm just going to bring a bit of that sky in there as well. So remember, with the lighter, lighter parts that have got more contrast, uh, more colour, etc., all a tool to help create attention in the areas you want. And what I've done there is by darkening that area down, I've basically said, look, I'm not interested in what's going on or you're looking at here. I'm only interested in you looking at the face here and maybe what's going on with the spear here so some ways of drawing a t your viewers attention in now we're nearly finished now I'm gonna do one more thing and that is to and this is optional but I, um, I quite like to have uh, a bit of grain I always add a little bit of grain to most of my images uh, but with this one I want to sort of re-grit it up a little bit um, so uh, we're gonna do that next just as a finishing touch before we do the grain I nearly forgot I want to add another adjustment layer on top here like so and what I want to do with this is I'm gonna uh, add a little bit of kind of atmospheric um, haze onto the image first of all you may want to use the color that's in the image normally already so I'm just gonna click on something over here um, maybe warm that up a little bit okay and get a paintbrush tool and I want to just sort of very roughly just uh, add a brush stroke from where the light source comes from across the image like so and another one and just build it up bit by bit maybe a little bit more towards the top there and then what's this this is doing is just adding kind of a bit of a bit of flare to the picture and just lightening just to help it blend together uh, let's change that to uh, color let's see what that does not a lot luminosity you could use luminosity or my probably preference here is to use something like lighten and um, might want to blur this as well go to filter uh, blur and then Gaussian blur again and just add a healthy amount of blur in maybe a hundred hundred and fifty pixels and then uh, once my computer's caught up we can drop the opacity a little bit on there just have a play around it you might want to put another layer on uh, and try it there's before there's after so that just adds a little bit of flair and a little bit more atmosphere which is what it's all about I'm gonna add another layer just on top of that I'm just gonna add a little bit more flair up here 
Now you could go in, another option is to go in as well and just add some um, proper flare using the filters. Um, but um, that can be a bit hit, but sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. They look a bit obvious, so I normally find myself jumping through hoops trying to make it look less obvious and less photoshopped. So there's another layer. Um, let's try it, that one on screen for a bit of a stronger effect. I'm going to blur this one as well. Filter blur, but I'm going to go do less blur on this one. Just drop it down and maybe 20 pixels. Before there's after. So that, let me just group these together. I'm going to lock them. Command and control G to group them. Call this one flare. So let's see what that's done. There's before, there's after. So that's, I think, really helped add some atmosphere to the picture. So next, we can also, again, you can, you know, the score, you can mask this off a little bit more if you don't want so much down here, uh, etc. So now we're going to move on to adding some noise, and that is going to be the final bit of this image, to add some noise and really sort of add some grittiness to the picture. Right, so to add the noise, we need to go up here to the Layers drop-down menu and go to New Layer. And uh, we're going to call this one uh, Noise. And we're going to go to Mode, we're going to go to Overlay. There. Uh, tick this box, fill with uh, colour 50% grey. And click OK. And we're going to right click and want to convert this to a smart object. Um, and the reasons will come apparent in a moment. It just means we're more flexible. Um, and uh, obviously, when we're adding grain and stuff, uh, sometimes you might want to go back in and readjust it. Well, this is a, an easy way of, uh, of doing that. Um, before we do that, I'm going to compress Command or con Control, Command or Control uh, J to copy, and we're going to start to rename these. The top one, I'm going to call Noise Lighten or Light, and the bottom one, I'm going to call Noise Dark. And we can close the bottom one off if you want to. Um, go to the light layer and go to uh, filter and noise add noise and we want to add some noise to this layer how much who knows just pick a number we can always come back and readjust it or drop the opacity so let's start off with about 16 percent for starters make sure that monochromatic and gaussian are both highlighted click OK. So this one, we want this one just to affect the highlights. So we're going to double click on the side of the layer here to bring, to bring up my uh, blend if sliders and I want to slide the shadow slider upwards okay, until it starts to disappear from the darker areas. We can click, uh, hold down the Alt or Option key to split that to give us a better transition. So you can now see it's mainly the highlights and some of the midtones this is affecting, but less so the shadows. And I do this, you don't have to do this, I do this because it just gives me more option um, going forward. So I can adjust the darks and the lights slightly differently. So there's my lovely grain in my mainly my highlights and midtones. In fact, I might even just go back in again, just bring this down here. Uh, so I bring that one up a little bit so it is literally more the highlights than the midtones like so there's before there's after a bit more subtle now in fact probably too subtle let's go back in again I'm going to drag that back down again just so I'm looking in the sky here at the moment to see where the grain comes in around there and that's the beauty of these adjustment layers is that we can uh, keep adjusting them there you go okay then go to the dark layer and we're going to do the same again we're going to go to uh, filter and add noise or command or control F will bring up the same dialog, bo dialog box and this time I'm going to take it off the highlights like so alt or option click to split that and I want it just mainly on the shadows. Click OK. Let me turn the light one off. That would have been an idea. There's before, there's after. So quite subtle at the moment. So I'm going to go back in again. 
and bring that up. That's better. As I said, you don't have to do this, um, but I find it just gives me there on certain images, just gives that extra bit of control over the image. So let me just group these two together down here. Command or Control G to group them. Call that one noise. So there's before, there's after. And we can go one step further, we can actually start to sharpen these as well if you wanted to, just to add a bit more. Or just drop the um, drop the opacities down a bit, maybe you don't want quite so much in certain areas, and more in others. And that's the beauty of having splitting this into two different layers. That's one way of, uh, of doing that, there is other ways of doing it, but that's another way. There's before, there's after, so that's just adding a bit more grit and... Uh, grittiness to the image and um, we can again mass this off and so forth and carry on adjusting forever and a day so many options um, open to us with Photoshop so I hope that's given you a few little ideas of what you can do just to add a bit more atmosphere to your pictures a bit of grittiness uh, as I said we could carry on showing you a lot more other options on this image but we've run out of time Hope you've enjoyed it and I hope to catch you on the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.